winning the Delano Polo Award and Carter before is Leonid Roderick, the Flash Racing Inglesby. Three times Roderick has won the Kayala Grand Prix and by a long shot, Roderick is the winningest active driver. As you see, Roderick and Michael Sykes have swept the front row. It's really been a resurgence for, uh, for Flash Racing. They're expecting big things out of this weekend. Arthur Kekin and Adrian Dever are also doing very well in qualifying. Luciano Sovereol make sure that all four of the championship contenders start in the top six. All four of the major championship contenders, I should point out. Anyway, the major news items leaving Indianapolis are uh, that Tom Delgado, in, uh, who's been driving for the motor all season, has finally called it quits on his TM Master Cup Series career. He's retired from full-time racing, however, I wouldn't be too surprised if we see him show up for the odd race or two in the future, possibly an independent show the outfit, but uh, his health clearly is not going to allow him to uh, race full-time anymore, which I think is um, somewhat of a travesty. The other major news item is that Greg Woodard, who you see driving for uh, Power Sing Incorporated this week, has been uh, docked 15 driver points and 25 independent points after causing that rather stupid collision with Dale Roswell after the yellow flag came out at Indianapolis. Dan Mullen is off at his sister's wedding this weekend, so he's not here at the track. I will therefore hand it over to Scott Bush, who will take it over for the race. Scott? Thank you, Lance. Roderick and his Flash Racing teammate Michael Sykes swept the front row, and Roderick gets a very good start off into turn number one, but this gives Sykes the opportunity to slide in behind the four, and it's going to look like a very good getaway for Flash Racing. But Sykes is already attempting a crossover, heading into turn number three. Adrian Devereaux and Melanie Cleveno fight for a third behind the leaders. Sykes looks like he has a very good run on the four car, but Leonid Roderick will ultimately have a much better run on the outside in turn number one, and he opens up an even bigger gap than he had at the start. This race will be the debut for Formula Overdrive competitor Cody Keaton, uh, driving for the cash-strapped Totino team, and Cody Keaton certainly has plenty of cash. Uh, his father, Jeff Keaton, is a high-ranking executive at Quantum Technologies, whose name is all over that 42 car. Keaton was well over a second off the pace in qualifying, and he is in a backup car after wrecking in the opening practice, although he missed all of the second practice. Asuma Kazuyama is in the 18 car for Star Team Nimoto after Tom Delgado retired. Uh, Kazuyama is currently running in 25th place, although uh, Nimoto was not expecting a great weekend for this 18 car, so this was to be expected. Kazuyama will be in this 18 car for the rest of the season, and he has given the Team Master Cup Series a full-time run in the past, and he has greatly improved from those days. A couple of spots behind Kazuyama is Anthony Griffith in the 29 car for Craig Mummert for the rest of the season, and here is Davina Henton running in ninth place, but uh, whenever Henton has had a good run, she inevitably blows up. However, uh, Henton was very enthusiastic about her chances today, and in front of Henton at the moment is her teammate Packer Carroll. Three of the main title contenders, Arto Kekkonen, Luciano Savarol, and Adrian Devereaux, are running right together, but the other main title contender, Leonid Roderick, is in the lead of the race. So the drivers running 4th through 6th should probably pick it up as the race goes on. Adrian Devereaux is the first driver to win four races in a season since 2006. His most recent win came last week at Indianapolis. Devereaux, of course, is the defending series champion, carrying the number one on his car, and the Colton Morrell Altair has easily been one of the best cars in the field. Here comes Michael Sykes with a run for the lead on his teammate, but Melanie Cleveno is in the battle as well. She takes advantage of Roderick being shuffled out of line and tries to make the move for second. BKR Australia is back at one of their two home races. Arla regular Barton Sandy driving car number 92 is the leading Independence Trophy driver in 22nd place. His teammate, Team Light's frontrunner Troy Adams, is back in 31st. And battling for position with um, Scott Stoidler in the, well, Tutino. Chris Allen and Ben Atkins in the 71 and 56 cars, respectively, are uh, back in 34th and 35th. Neither of them have been close to the leader's pace all weekend. Greg Woodard, who caused quite a bit of trouble at Indianapolis, is in the number 08 car for Power Steering Incorporated in this race. 
Uh, Woodard missed the first practice for uh, reasons that we do not know yet, but he is running ahead of his teammate Kurt Pliskin at the moment. Ian Cooper and Yamino Tenchi battle for 10th. Ian Cooper was the reason that Tenchi got her big break in the Team Master Cup series in the first place. Uh, he recommended her to star Team Nimoto at Decatur in, I want to say, 2009. Cooper has a comfortable gap over Tenchi at the moment, but Packer Carroll and Matthias Taub are looking to make a charge. Leonid Roderick decides that his teammate Michael Sykes has had enough of the spotlight, and he tries to make another run at the 44 car for the lead. But uh, he's got the Gessler of Arto Kekkonen all over him. K Kekkonen tries to make a charge around the outside, and while we saw Roderick uh, able to hold off Michael Sykes on the outside of turn one, uh, Kekkonen is not able to have the same amount of success. Luciano Savral is lurk lurking back in the fourth place, but he's got a puncture on that three car, and he has to bring it into the pits, and he will lose quite a bit of ground doing so. Tough break for Savral, who has three, uh, two victories this year, one at the road course in, uh, in Atlanta, and the other at the short track in Quincy. Arto Kekkonen looks to take a, the lead away from Michael Sykes, and look out for Cody Keaton in car number 42. And without missing a beat, Arto Kekkonen uses Keaton as a pick to take over the lead. Uh, Keaton is still holding up Michael Sykes as Roderick gets back around him for second, and Melanie Clavino wants third. I can't imagine that too many people are going to be happy with Keaton after this, but one of those people is certainly not Arto Kekkonen. Cleveno is still working on Sykes for third. Matthias Taub, Packer Carroll, and Zelda Ashby are all having very solid runs. And, oh, we've got a few more cars held up by the 42. Ian Cooper and Yamino Tenchi. Taub jumps to the outside and tries to make its way around them, but uh, he ends up getting held up instead. Keaton lets Tenchi go by on the inside. Packer Carroll and Zelda Ashby are looking to follow suit. Keaton would then slide up in uh, turn three. Not sure if uh, he was letting Cooper and Taub go or if he just simply pushed up the track. Lewis Kingston has been dropping through the field like a stone in the past few laps. There is Luciano Savarol in three cars stuck behind Ben Atkins and Scott Stoidler. Uh, Savarol is currently one lap down after having that cut tire. But back to Lewis Kingston, we're not sure if he has a problem with that car or if that team just missed the setup. Melanie Cleveno is currently up to second behind leader Arto Kekkonen. She spent most of the weekend doing fan tours. It's nice to see a driver always connected uh, to her fans in such a manner. Greg Woodard is currently in 24th place, but Kurt Pliskin is chasing him down. I'm not sure if PSI is going to order Woodard to let Pliskin go. I know that when Anthony Griffith was in that car, he certainly accused PSI of using a lot of team orders. Pliskin would eventually chase down the 08 car, but uh, he does seem to have a bit of trouble getting by Woodard, so I'm not sure uh, that team orders are in place over at PSI, but Woodard is certainly dropping back quite a bit. I think the handling might have gone away on that 08 car. And Woodard just isn't a terribly experienced driver in these uh, high levels of motorsport as well. Leonid Roderick and Arto Kekkonen, two of the big title contenders, battle for the lead. Kekkonen let Roderick have the inside in turn number one, but Roderick was not able to do anything with it. On lap number 28 of 140, Keaton is going two laps down, and he is holding up the leaders quite a bit. And Keaton certainly seems to be driving like he isn't even aware that the leaders are bunching up behind him. This is probably going to be a bit of a break for Chris Johans and uh, Yulia Nasova, who are catching up to the lead group now. And Michael Sykes is going to get around Keaton for the lead. Adrian Devereaux follows suit. Chris Johans moves up to third. Arto Kekkonen, who was the leader, is now back to fourth. And Yulia Nasova in the Katsev is now fifth. So all of the leaders have now gotten by Cody Keaton, and they are almost certain to be fuming inside their helmets. Michael Sykes pulls out to a huge lead, not what we expected with um, Adrian Devereaux right behind him. I guess uh, Hodges Walter Racing must have missed the setup on that one car. Sykes has two victories in the Team Master Cup Series this season, one in Russia and the other at his uh, home race in Wales but he made quite a bit of a splash in the series before that, winning the Independence Trophy in 2010. Ben Atkins is in danger of going a lap down, 
The Englishman has not been terribly impressive in the Team Master Cup Series, and he has not been terribly impressive in Arla either, where he runs full-time. Several more of the lead lap cars are trying to make their way around Cody Keaton. Keaton slides up the track and hits the wall in turn number two. I believe that's the first time he's hit the wall today, which comes as quite the surprise to me. And the officials took notice and promptly slapped Keaton with a warning for erratic driving. Keaton would be the first car to pit. I believe that contact with wall gave him a tire rub. Among the leaders, Melanie Klevina was the first car to pit, along with Yulia Nasova in the 8. Both of these drivers are having great runs so far. Davina Henton in car number 6 pits along with them. And behind these three, several more cars follow suit, including Zelda Ashby, Scott Bates, and Marcus Leonard in the triple nine car. Michael Sykes, the race leader, pits on lap number 42. Ben Atkins is right in front of him. He was about to go a lap down before Sykes pitted. Most of the other cars running in the top 10 are going to follow suit. Arto Kekkonen got around Adrian Devereaux a while ago. Luciano Savaral cycles through to the lead. After he cut his tire, uh, the number three crew gave him full service, but he will have to pit in about 10, uh, 12 laps, and he will certainly lose all of that ground he made up. He gets trapped behind several of the other cars that pitted. Cody Keaton is still running very slowly, and he is holding up the Gasniers of Ryan Matthews and Mika Pasanen. Luciano Savaral cannot keep up with the cars that are on fresh tires, and he makes a bit of contact with Ryan Matthews in the 11. Scott Bates is right behind the 11. Apparently, Savaral didn't like that. He gives Matthews a bump coming into turn three and takes all three of those cars into the wall. And uh, Bates, Matthews, and Savaral all had terminal damage. Ben Atkins piles into the back of the 11 car, trying to get himself slowed down. It looks like Savaral just let his temper get the best of him, and it backfired horribly, and poor Scott Bates really didn't deserve to be in that mess. And here comes Ben Atkins, trying to avoid the wreck, but there are a lot of marbles down on the apron, and they're kind of difficult to navigate when you're hard on your brakes. And here in the aerial shot, you actually saw Savaral get a little bit loose, and came down onto the 11 more than the 11 pushed up into him. So, looks like that whole deal might have been, uh, might have been Savaral's fault. And obviously, Savaral didn't think so. The Brazilian has been rather emotional. And then coming back to the caution, Troy Adams gets into the back of the 88 car and sends him through the grass. So, that just adds in insult to injury for Scott Bates. Michael Sykes is the leader. After the field pitted under that caution, Yulia Nasova is running in second, and Yamino Tenchi is third. Chris Allen gets into the back of the 50 of Scott Stoidler, coming out of turn two and almost caused a big accident right there. But Stoidler has been well off the pace in that Tutino, not very surprising for that car. And Stoidler is not being a very gracious back marker at the moment, and he hasn't exactly been very gracious off track either, uh, throwing his team under the bus in that whole uh, MCMA debacle. Kevin Dwyer has driven that 72 car all the way into 7th place as you see Cody Keaton eat the wall coming off of turn 2. But more importantly, this has been one of the better runs of Dwyer's season. In an era where the TM Master Cup Series has seen much more international involvement, Kevin Dwyer has emerged as one of the great American hopefuls. Leonid Roderick took 4 tires under that yellow flag and that has dropped him all the way back to 16th, but Roderick has had a very fast car tonight. So, I expect him to get back up to the front very soon. Keaton has to pit once again after hitting the wall, which caused another tire rub. Yami no Tenchi is currently running in third place, and from what I understand, she's been holding up Silly Season quite a bit. There are a lot of teams that are after her, and a lot of teams are going to end up finalizing their driver lineups after she decides where to go. It doesn't make a whole lot of sense if you ask me, but... Uh, I guess that's what happens when you have a lot of teams after a hot free agent. Arto Kekkonen was another one of those drivers who pitted under caution, and his team made quite a few mistakes in their pit stop, which dropped him very deep in the field. Chris Johans joins him in as well. Johans was running well inside the top 10 before that yellow flag. Here comes Cody Keaton out of the pit lane, and he almost wipes out Melanie Cleveno. He almost merged right back into the racing line. And he holds up Greg Woodard and Kurt Pliskin coming into turn three. Marcus Leonard gets away while Keaton holds up the rest of the field behind him. 
and uh, Cody Keaton would be slapped with another warning for erratic driving. Ian Cooper is up to fourth place at the moment, though it's a rather lonely fourth place. His only, uh, the only other car near him at the moment is Scott Stoidler, who is a lap down. Adrian Devereaux is eighth, running behind Melanie Cleveno in the 74 car. As I've said before, this night has been a bit of a struggle for the number one team. Uh, I guess they just haven't hit the setup on that car, and he hasn't gotten the chance to uh, run close to the lead. Blake Camphausen is currently running in 20th place, the last position that will award points. We certainly made note of Camphausen's success in Arla last season, running on a limited schedule. Apparently, Team Star USA took notice and signed him to this 15 car, although he has done nothing all year. Michael Sykes still leads as he puts Ben Atkins a lap down. Yulia Nasova is running in second, and, he, and she gets held up behind the 56 a little bit, allowing Sykes to get away. In 2010, if you had told me that Katsev was going to be running up front on a regular basis, I would have laughed in your face. But this season, Yulia Nasova won against her teammate Jose Luis Martinez in a spectacular fashion at France, so Katsev is certainly a legitimate contender this season. Yami Notenshi and Ian Cooper are going to try to join the battle for second place. And Cooper blasts by Atkins as if he wasn't even there, while Nasova and Tenchi had quite a bit of trouble with him. Let's see how patient Michael Sykes is behind Cody Keaton. Oh, and he almost turns Keaton uh, into the grass coming off a of turn two. So, uh, the leaders are starting to get very annoyed with Cody Keaton. And you just saw him hold up Yami no Tenchi considerably while the two leaders get away. I am very surprised that Keaton has not been wrecked by the leaders at this point as Ian Cooper tries to get around him. Lewis Kingston hooks Mika Pasanen into the grass coming off a of turn four. Pasanen slams on his brakes. The car gets loose and he almost wipes out the pace car. Fortunately, he didn't, and even more fortunately, he didn't wipe anyone else out as he shot back up the track. Although, uh, I think he did give Troy Adams a little dent in the side of that car. The Red Gessler pace car is just fine. You don't have to keep those fingers crossed any longer, folks. We had more pit stops under this caution, and Davina Henton is now in the lead of the race. Although she's got Lean and Roderick behind her, and Roderick has easily had one of the fastest cars of the night. Greg Woodard is up to fourth place in the 08 car, although I believe that he did not pit. So I expect that top five run for him to be very short-lived. Chris Allen tries to make a run under the sixth car. Lena Roderick was prepared to follow him past Henton, but uh, Allen did not have a very good run on her. And here is our favorite back marker, Cody Keaton, as he saw Chris Johans uh, get hooked onto the apron by Adrian Devereaux in the one car. We know those two have had a bit of a history of rubbing fenders and uh, taking each other out. And it, Devereaux did indeed get into the back of the 64 car coming off of turn four. Although neither driver has really been that hostile towards each other off the track. So we'll just see what they both have to say regarding this incident. Davina Henton is certainly not caving under the pressure that Lena Roderick is putting on her. In fact, she's even getting away from him a, a bit. Chris Johans is running in 24th place. He has been making his way up through the standings after a slow start to the season. And he, he gets hooked and turned into the wall by Ben Atkins. And I think Atkins got hooked by the 30 of Charlie Waters. Chris Johans will go out of the race. He was running in the top 10 for most of the day uh, until he got shuffled back by pit stops. And Charlie Waters tries to make his way under the lapped car of Ben Atkins. And he just hooks the 56 car and turns the 64 almost dead on into the wall. Waters has come under fire for dumping people like that in the past. So, we're not sure what's going to happen to him after this. Adrian Devereaux was right behind the 30 car when this happened, and he uh, immediately got on his brakes and came through it clean. Ian Cooper was running in a very solid 12th place in the 777 car, although a suspension failure, unfortunately, is going to end his night. Davina Henton is still in the lead when the race restarts on lap number 88. She easily gets clear of the lapped cars, while Roderick 
is going to have to uh, expend quite a bit of effort to deal with them. That was a great start by Henton, who I believe is looking for a ride for 2013. Kevin Dwyer is now up to third, and he is challenging Leonid Roderick for second. Dwyer has been driving the wheels off of that 72 car, formerly driven by his father, six-time DM Master Cup Series champion Benny Dwyer. This is easily one of the best runs that Dwyer has had all season. And we have trouble in the back. Barton Sandy goes around. Adrian Devereaux is in it. Packer Carroll is in as well, and he goes for a roll. After being hit by Yami no Tenchi in the 25, let's take a look at what happened this time. And it looks like another driver is uh, fed up with Ben Atkins. This time it's Adrian Devereaux, who has been quite hostile towards lapped cars in the past, but has never really actually wrecked anybody until now. And Barton, Sandy, and Packer Carroll just get collected after decent runs uh, from the both of them. And the officials uh, would look into this incident between the 1 and the 56. And there's Packer going over as he gets hit by the 25. Most of the field pitted under this caution. Yulia Nosova only took two tires and is now the leader of the race. But Scott Stoidler is the last car on the lead lap. And Nosova is really boxed in by the Tutinos. And Chris Allen in the 71 is also a lap down. Thankfully, Scott Stoidler gets a good run off of turn two and uh, gives Nasova some breathing room. Michael Sykes dodges Cody Keaton on the outside and moves up into second place. He got by Azuma Kaziyama, who is now back to third. Uh, Nimoto was not expecting great things from Kaziyama this weekend, but he is running in the top five at the moment, although that is more due to pit strategy than anything. Zach Duff is running 21st in the Zenith. Juno wants him for 2013, and he almost got taken out of the race by Barton Sandy in the 92, but thankfully Duff kept it together, and he will surge on, uh, trying to get Zenith some points. Kurt Pliskin is up to 6th place. That car is starting to come to him after a slow start to the race. There's been a lot of infighting at PSI between Pliskin and Anthony Griffith, but now that Griffith is out of the way, uh, maybe we'll see some better runs out of Pliskin. Michael Sykes has chased down Yulia Nasova, and he now goes for the lead. Davina Henton and Lena Broderick are back in third and fourth. Henton is doing a great job hanging in the top five after she was barely running in the top ten at the beginning of the race. Arto Kekkonen is back in tenth. This could be a very big night for Kekkonen, and he hooks the 50 of Scott Stoiler coming out of turn number two. Anthony Griffith hooks Chris Allen into the grass coming off of turn four. Uh, Allen smashes on his brakes, and he smashes right into the pace car and takes Zach Duff completely by surprise, wiping out the five car as well. Apparently, that pace car was not going to get lucky twice. Thankfully, nobody is actually in it uh, in between cautions. We were a little bit concerned about Zach Duff, Again, Allen caught him completely by surprise. It took Duff a while to get out of that car, but when he did, he did so under his own power. The silver Gessler pace car was brought out to pace the field. Let's hope that this one doesn't get smashed too. Jose Luis Martinez would peel off the track along with the pace car. Martinez had gearbox issues, and he would be done for the night. He was running in a solid 15th place. I'm not sure if Nasova's team is going to be concerned about this. Kevin Dwyer is the leader on the restart. And in second place is Dale Roswell in the 22 Freedom for Palestine car. Zelda Ashby rounds out the top three. And Dwyer gets a great start over Roswell as Ashby fights him for second. Dwyer is well on his way to winning his very first TM Master Cup Series race. But he's got to watch out for Leonid Roderick in the four. Roderick is looking for his fifth series title. And he is charging his way to the front. But he's got to get by Dale Roswell first. Roswell is looking very racy tonight. As the laps click away, I am convinced that Roswell, who is well into his 60s and is the oldest driver in the field, is never going to retire. Uh, especially when he keeps putting together runs like this. However, uh, Roderick is eventually going to get around Dale Roswell as Roswell loses the back end a little bit coming through turn two. And he concedes the position to the four car. And after that, uh, Roderick had no problem getting around the 72 car. The SAR has not exactly been up to the pace as some of these foreign and privateer cars this season, but Dwyer is certainly putting everything he's got in, into driving the wheels off of that car, and that certainly counts for something. 
But Dwyer is then going to fall victim to some of the more powerful cars in the field. Leonid Roderick has a very big lead over his teammate Michael Sykes, and then it's an even more distant third back to Davina Henton. Roderick had a bit of a slow start to the season, but what, then he won the Cariola Grand Prix, and everything's been going smoothly for him ever since. Look out for Cody Keaton, but Keaton moves out of the way for Roderick and lets him go. Keaton's been getting better at the whole moving out of the way for the leaders thing as the night goes on. Kurt Pliskin is now up to fifth place in the 16 car. I honestly didn't think he'd be able to contend for a top five after the slow start he had to the night. Pliskin only has one victory in the Team Master Cup series, which came at Indianapolis in 2009. Marcus Leonard takes 20th place and the final point from Blake Kamphausen. Scott Seudler is right in the middle of this battle and not moving out of the way like he should. He hooks the triple nine car and takes Leonard himself and Kamphausen right into the wall. I'm not sure what Seudler was thinking, but I'm pretty certain that nobody's going to be happy with him after this. Leonid Roderick continues to lead on the restart but Davina Henton took second from Michael Sykes before the caution came out. Henton is making herself look very good tonight for any prospective owners for the 2013 season. The 2011 TM Lights champion is finally starting to show quite a bit of speed, but Michael Sykes is now trying to make a run at her for the second spot, although he can't quite do it at the moment. Though a few moments later, here comes Michael Sykes with a much better run. Dale Roswell is still in fourth place, but Arto Kekkonen is lurking back in fifth. Henton gets a much better run into turn one, though. Henton is really fighting to try to keep second place, even though I think it's pretty clear that the Flash Racing cars are among the best of the night. The leaders encounter Cody Keaton once again, who uh, graciously moves out of the way for Leonid Roderick. To Keaton's credit, I can't exactly say the same about Scott Stoiler's relationship with some of these lead cars. However, Cody Keaton is nine laps down. Leonid Rotter continues to lead as he gets around Scott Stoiler, speaking of him. Davina Henton and Michael Sykes make their way around Stoiler with no problem, so maybe Stoiler is starting to become more gracious. And Leonid Roderick is going to come off of turn number four to take his second TM Master Cup Series victory of the season. An impressive run from the pole by Leonid Roderick will do wonders for his championship hopes. Davina Henton finished a very impressive second over Michael Sykes, but Michael Sykes ties Davina Henton's uh, points as he led the most laps in the race. Arto Kekkonen drove all the way back up to fourth. Melanie Cleveno scores her best career finish, fifth place. Dale Roswell slipped back to sixth, but that's a very good run for Roswell tonight. Kurt Pliskin is seventh, Zelda Ashby eighth. The handling went away on Kevin Dwyer's car. He finished in ninth. Asuma Kazuyama rounds out the top 10, even though that team was not expecting him to do anything today. Peter Short finished in a quiet 11th. I, I see that the Dalton cars are 16th and 17th, Waters and Griffith. The BKR cars 18th and 19th, and Marcus Leonard snags the last point despite getting wrecked. And uh, Adrian Devereaux finished in 21st place, so he missed out on points giving Arto Kekkonen the opportunity to extend his lead. Luciano Savarol is only five points behind his teammate Devereaux. Leonid Roderick is lurking back in fourth place four with 480 points. The top four are all in serious contention for the championship, but then it is a whopping 161 points back to Scott Bates. Michael Sykes is sixth, Johans is seventh after he got wrecked. Uh, likewise for Packer Carroll, they were in position to make up some ground tonight. Davina Henton is up to 11th with her impressive drive. Uh, Scott Stoiler continues to fall through the point standings as he is cursed with the Tutino equipment. And here are the Independence Trophy standings. All of the independent drivers who competed today, Ben Atkins, Barton Sandy, Troy Adams, and Chris Allen have one race remaining in their schedules. Greg Woodard has one race remaining in his Independence Trophy schedule as well, but as long as he is driving that 08 car, it is not going to count towards his independent points. Vitaly Karpenko in the 84 car for Toyota has competed in two races so far, and I believe he will be back at Queensland. 